BMW M2 Coupe was one of the cars you really wanted to see on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. And yes, we're doing that right now, right here, with a detailed exterior, interior and of course the driving performance. We'll have a special sneak preview ride very soon up the hill. I can promise you also a very nice slide there, power slide there. And also we have a full speed Autobahn performance, 0 to 200 kilometers an hour or to 125 miles an hour. So um, stay tuned for that, of course. And we'll tell you everything you need to know and you need to experience with this very performance vehicle. Let's go now with Auto in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. So guys, and here we go. And 200 is reached. So guys, we'll start our special riding part, just a preview with our agile up the hill, agile ride up the hill to have some fun. Sport plus mode. Having the automatic shift activated, I can concentrate on the steering wheel, I like that. Also have to, have to do something with safety if you can keep the hands at the steering wheel all the time. Such an agile car, I can already tell you so far. The steering feels very natural, so you can react to all of the situations. And look at here, when I'm doing like this slalom, wow, what a great handling. Hardly any other car that is so agile and so light in the feeling. Of course, those horsepower, 370 horsepower, give us so much performance. Wow. In the Sport Plus mode, um, the stability control is also a little bit deactivated like this. You can see you can slide the rear out just a little bit. Well, not a little bit. That was pretty much. <laughs> so pay attention to that. Don't exaggerate it. And I'm just on dry terrain and if you got no traffic and stuff. I'm not deactivating the ESC completely, just once. When I do the launch control later, um, already seen just a, a short preview of that and the whole stuff will then be later. Wow, that was so much fun already. What a great handling car. But what about everything else in the details about this one here? Let's go. So that was already quite entertaining, wasn't it? Yeah, for me as well. So we're starting with the base prices for a normal two series. Coupe is about 28,000 euros in Germany, taking that as a reference and pretty similar in a lot of other markets, including VAT here. And this one here, 57. So it's about double the price than the base two series. Of course, it's mainly due to this huge engine. We'll also take a look at very soon. Other than that, this car sits lower and also has this massive lower spoiler. You see, this, you have to pay attention when you go to some basement ramps, for example, that you don't really scratch the car from beneath. 
Then there's this strong double kidney, the M2 logo with the famous M stripes. If you want to know the background to the story of those M stripes colors, check out our special episode from the BMW Welt or BMW Welt. That's a special, um, you know, special feature we did there in Munich. Then also in the glossy finish, the double kidney here. So overall a very massive design, very powerful already for a compact car because even if it maybe doesn't look like that from the front, it's still in the compact segment. If you have seen our coverage from Geneva or the BMW 5 Series driving review, you can see that the new 5 Series has those closing double kidney where the, the background can be closed to, um, to increase the, the wind efficiency. Here it's still all open and you can see the radiator right behind it. 4 meters 47 or 14 foot 6 is the total length of this M2 Coupe. And of course, you see again, it sits lower than the design is really like a sports shoe for sure. And it also drives like that. You've already seen that. Then we got an M2 batch right here. And in this case, 18 inch rims. We're still on winter tires. Usually it comes with 19 inch rims, but I think this size here is perfectly fine it matches the car very well even with uh, with those winter tires they don't look you know too big or so really um, in a beautiful way there's also a special blue available for the m2 that would be my favorite and of course um, here rather the elegant choice in in the gray then the door handles are pretty big and then the special thing here is that we have the wider wheel arches you can already see it here with a shoulder the typical coupe style but you can even see those bigger wheel arches better from the rear. And here we go, what a massive appearance for a compact car. You see it here, those wider wheel arches, especially from the rear perspective. But the wing is rather elegant, I like that. It's, you know, a little bit too much if that would be that one. Then, exhaust pipe, one, two, three, four. And the central diffuser, that is of course here, definitely the most dramatic perspective of this very vehicle. It's always with BMW you close it on the logo and open it on the top one. Um, with other brands it's obviously the other way around quite often. So, And then here the door handles also keyless entry. A coupe means no frame around the window and wide opening that you can also access the back. And then nice we got some Alcantara stuff here on the inside of the doors that feels soft and great. Um, other, a lot of hard plastic is used. This one should be level red, I guess. And then interesting here on the door handles, this is an, let's say, open carbon fiber feeling. It's something, you know, I'm not really sure what it is made of, but it's, it's interesting, but I'm not sure if it's really durable. We have to see about that. And then rest, the main interior M Sports steering wheel. I really like that steering wheel, even better if it could be gone in Love Red or in Alcantara. But I really love the contrast stitches and different colors in those M colors right there. And then the biggest flaw in the interior is that we only get those animal skin seats. It's not making sense for a sporty car um, because also, um, you know, go to left and right and stuff and it also gets too warm so fabric or alcantara option is missing with this vehicle but i like the blue contrast stitches that is really uh, especially fitting when you get the blue car on the exterior so that is a really nice stitching job they did there but they could have done that also with other material in general you see black is the defining color and this is you know prefer to a sporty side but you can already see it's not the most modern cockpit it's you know a little bit aged nowadays but at least you know it's not nothing spectacular but also nothing bad at all so 
typical you know BMW that is rather reducing everything that you are left with the sporty riding. Let's get inside and of course you sit a little bit lower but not that low as in you know truly built sports cars and I always like when sports cars are based on normal cars like on a normal compact or mid-sized car because you still have a rather normal seating position. One minute is 86 or 6 or 1 enough room above my head that's no problem and also for two big adults in the front seats absolutely no problem it's actually quite comfortable for a car that has such sporty potential then the steering wheel there is it <laughs> can be adjusted very well also very flexible indeed and then the thing is with the seats i mean I think it's totally totally fine that you have um, the manual set up everywhere because you know so much electronics nowadays cars so I'm also okay if you have something that's still manually and then the, the thing is here, um, here the, there's the back part you can release it and then adjust it and then this one here is to adjust the height and the things you always like push the steering wheel or grab it to go <laughs> up and down it's a special BMW system um, I haven't seen it in any other brand and I'm not exactly sure, uh, you know, you have to get used to it, to adjust it. You don't pump, for example, so, so no pumping up, yo, here today. Um, but just do it like this. And I mean, on the other hand, you can say it can help because it's maybe easier to get the seat higher again. And if you just want to let lower, that you just lean backwards and maybe push against the seat. So why not? It's, it's unique and I think I also like this way of adjusting. Instruments, rather classic, big RPM right, speed left, and just a little small digital display in the central. Cockpit overview here, um, I mean, it's functional, yes, and the build quality is okay, but some competitors already do it better. But in the new BMW 5 Series, for example, BMW has stepped up the game again. However, I think a lot of different forms used here, like here, something here, and then horizontal here. So I think it's not really a clear design language. The display is also attached there on the top, but the horizontal layout, that looks pretty spectacular, I think. And um, zoom more deals to that, because I think the resolution is so great. It's crystal clear. I like that. Um, this one here, probably um, this unit could be saved at one point, maybe. Um, the climate unit below that. Um, standards go to turn you can reach it very well while driving as well so um, that's pretty much fine and as already mentioned the m steering wheel which is always um, a good choice even if we can still work on the surface it's not a touch screen they have changed that um, now in the in the newer big models like um, 7 and 5 series where you can also touch but here it's not available yet gps you can um, you can check out for example so um, it's very well to see, um, good visualization here, of course, loading there, <laughs> going up to the world. Generally, I'm really satisfied with it, um, it works pretty well, has a very good visualization for sure. Then in my week, for example, we got some interesting stuff like technology in action and sport displays. We have the mount, also when we drive the car, you can see the horsepower, the kilowatts output, output and the torque in newton meters. So, uh, telephone you can either for example can use it with bluetooth but then you can um, also go here here for example notifications is also possible but not using that ever so um, what is really interesting is um, when you have the uh, you, your phone for example your apple carplay you can also directly go for it via bluetooth so the only car that has um, only Brand actually that has the wireless Apple CarPlay. That's really great. It's working flawlessly here. It didn't work in the 5 Series flawlessly, but it does right here. In the middle console, you can put some stuff right here. Beverage holders for putting other stuff, but also um, the cups. Um, not adaptive though. 12 volt power supply and USB port 1. And uh, then in front of that, we got the gear shifting lever. Here it's for 7 speed DCT. I think it's, it looks a little bit weird, doesn't it? And also the functionality, I mean, like neutral here, reverse here, uh, plus minus, you can go manual, then to D and S mode there. Hmm, I think a little bit complicated, um, but you get used to it, uh, at least I can tell you. And then left next to it, you can 
deactivate the stability program and also the driving modes we will later on talk about sport and comfort you can change right here with this lever. This is the way to control the infotainment system by the way here turning and pressing and you got some shortcuts and then you know this uh, material here I'm not really sure about the durability maybe one of uh, you is uh, M2 customer or so and then can give us some info on that we can move forward to that here good build quality that we have a fixed head uh, armrest here and you know, the USB support aux in and uh, this is quite funny you see this blue light flashing then here as soon as a phone is mounted in there to connect it to the car antenna to have better um, voice quality. What about the rear? Here, rear seats and well it's not only for emergency, of course it doesn't offer too much room. Slide back the seat and well when I'm sitting in the front so it doesn't really fit so well with my knees I would say maximum 175 meters or five foot nine something like that also with a headroom I'm, I'm hitting it I mean for short term also works with four tall adults a long term run should be a little bit smaller or also children isofix anchor points here in the rear on both seats and also top tether up available so you are also flexible in this I mean at least it's not only emergency seats so you can really use them just not for tall adults on the long term run and the boot space here we go for a sports car yeah why not but of course there are compact cars that offer more handy setup also a one series is of course better as a coupe version but you can live with that if, if you have that sporty car a net right here and below that is just a car battery there we go and you can also flip the seats you can unleash them right here this it's not the not the handiest solution going around then you can flip it here and also like this and then you have the maximum loading capacity here here we go three liter six cylinder r6 with 370 horsepower really massive and the acceleration is 4.3 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour or to 62 miles an hour that's only half a second slower than an m4 for example and of course this one here profits from less weight so we will expect a massive performance you have already seen something of that and uh, you can also get a six-speed manual or as we have here the seven speed dual clutch transmission. That's the way to go to the motorway <laughs> from the traffic light. So there's no one in behind me anymore. So uh, this driving party now, some autobahn riding first, then some city part transition, everyday riding for this car, and then the boost, the final conclusion to the unlimited autobahn riding. And being in the Sport Plus mode here now, that also helped me to get this big boost there. But you can actually also ride it uh, just normally here of course because you see that the stability control is drawn back it's not really uh, recommendable for slippery conditions and in normal traffic you should at least stay then if you're not on the racetrack in the sport mode the sport mode already turns up the gears a little bit so more rpms lower gears earlier higher gears later <laughs> that's the way around here and that's already enough however you can also stay in the comfort mode this gives you a little bit more calmness than in riding when you're at steady speeds for example and the great thing about this car is also when you're at higher speeds doing some lane changes <laughs> wow. this car is so agile so light it's a it's really a really a weapon really a, a driving machine so you always have to be careful not to exaggerate it. 
or think about who else is riding with you on the road and don't exceed your own limits. Especially because this car is really this classic rear-wheel drive only. And so, you know, keep it in the normal modes then that you don't slip out the rear too much. Just do it, you know, when you have a very open spot, you're on an ice lake, for example, or whatever, or on the racetrack, then it's, then it's okay to, go, to do it. So, the visibility is quite good, so to the sides also, and the front, and you also don't sit too low, um, because we're still based on a normal compact class car, so um, not this supercar, sports car layout, and I think that's, that's quite good to have some somewhat of a compromise for your everyday driving. Um, this coupe style limits the view to the rear just a little bit to the rear sides but then again the car is so short that you have a general good overview and also this um, this C pillar there the nice coupe style is also not too thick so you can watch that very well the steering for the city and stuff I mean it's it's feeling very naturally that's a good thing um, it is sporty oriented so you do have to do some steering work and when you're parking going back and forth and so on that's not too comfortable then because there's no compromise here again so you know there are some cars which have a progressive steering who do have the compromise between sportiness and still being able to handle very well in everyday driving and parking and stuff but here we said okay we want to make it sporty and then it's a little bit harder than to, to turn the steering wheel as well when you you know want to do some some usual stuff um, but at this this car is a, really an m car so a true bmw m version i think that's it's also also fine because people buying this car exactly want this this very steering characteristic the suspension here you see when the road is a little bumpy uh, a little is bisschen in, in German by the way German listen for today <laughs> our German viewers will find that very funny probably so you can also turn that up into the sport mode again you also hear it in the RPMs and then it gets a little bit raw rougher raw indeed and sport plus even more so suspension is a little bit firmer then and so that's also not that recommendable for for everyday driving because it really gets very rough then maybe you really see it also on, on camera so usually you stay with the comfort mode and then it's of course already stiffer than um, a normal two series coupe or, or one series um, have to be aware of that so of course at some point you have to lose comfort when you want to be sportier you know you, you can always have both at the same time this car here also when you ride it in the city always inspires you to go further to ride a little faster because it's really very aggressive already in the comfort mode especially how how the throttle input is designed and how the rpms turn up for example when you're riding in your neighborhood you're just riding slowly and the exhaust already goes like blah, 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 in the comfort mode you feel like, oh, maybe I don't want to wake up all my neighbors when I'm starting in the morning, going to the airport, and I'll shift up to second gear, just, you know, <laughs> by myself, just to keep it a little bit quieter in, in the neighborhood. There you see how this, this nature of this small beast is. And that's just in the comfort mode. Of course, when you um, go higher with the, with the sports mode, then it's even a little harder for sure so but rolling here I mean sound insulation wise I think it's a quite good result also when we were just driving 100 so I think they've also done a good job right there and you are really able to react on, on the situation so much further and wow it's so much fun just to do a lane change like this because the car is really feeling like a go-kart immediate reactions to all of the commands you give in the steering wheel and that of course gives you the big fun then also for your 
for your trips and your to work and dropping your kids well, dropping kids at school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there were Isofix cutters back there, so <laughs> but probably not the most handy car to to drop your kids at school. So now we are approaching uh, the autobahn once again. We'll go a little bit faster and also just a short acceleration, just a typical acceleration when going on the motorway, for example. Also in the higher gears, I put in the Sport Plus motorway because we are really dry to run. And I just have to hit the October throttle once. Audi Q5, SQ5 bullying me from behind, then blurb, I'm gone. Thank you, don't bully me again. And that was just 80 to 100, like one breathing, one spreading throttle, like for half a second, and you go, oh, you're gone. And as I said earlier, just half second, half of a second difference between this one here and, a, and an M4. So, I mean, you, you pay, pay lay, way less money, of course, the car's lighter and still has so much power with those 370 horsepower from that R6 three liter engine and that gives you gives you so much performance there's also a lane departure warning that is available as um, you know as a as assistance systems and then there's also activated here the cruise control you can see it then here on, on the central display and the cruise control automatically sets the car back from Sport Plus to Sport Mode because they say we only do the cruise controls, it's for all manufacturers, without those Sport Plus modes on that deactivate the stability control. So um, that's, a, that's an important fact for sure. Yeah, I'm generally very satisfied with this dual clutch transmission they are offering here. You know, usually BMW uses those torque converters from the ZF, here it's a little bit different. Uh, you can also get the manual uh, version for, for this one here, you know, when you, when you prefer this very pure feeling from the manual hand drive. I think it's just, you know, a matter of, of preference. Uh, sporty and faster are usually today the automatic transmissions, at least on paper. On the racetrack, I mean, they also add some more weight. If you're a pure, really a race driver, then you might really go for the menu, or if you just want to, to have this feeling. But I found it quite comfortable also to drive with the with the automatic gearbox, and then also again, it's super fast for sure. What you can also see here in the displays, always when I let go of the gas, or the gas, then these efficient dynamics, this the, the, the blue part is playing a role and that tells me this mild hybrid system which is built in pretty much every BMW nowadays is working and mild hybrid what does that mean it's not really you know not the hybrid in a separate battery sense but they mean by that that the braking energy is recuperated just a little bit for the normal car battery and in that time the different, the, the other con consumers, the electric consumers of the car, like for example, for example, light machine, AC and stuff, they don't have to use additional engine power. Well, well, that's you know, it's a little bit complicated because those systems they drain power, of course, and in the end, the engine has to work against it. You know, those power generating, and that is then saved, and ultimately, it can save some fuel. So about that autobahn performance, let's go from 100 now and maybe sport mode here, let's go. That was 100 to 150 in fifth gear, but of course we can also start in a, in a lower gear, but that just to show you that also in the higher gears this engine still has so much torque to really master this one. And we can also be in 100 with the third gear. Let's go. That 
was 100 to 150 in the third gear. And as soon as you see as I hit the shifting pedal, really goes like this and bam. So it's a really, wow. <laughs> so much performance with this car. Just so easy to get to higher speeds and this is so stable. And Very, very light. So here, interesting. The car remains in the first gear. <laughs> it gets so loud. So this is different than here, the automatic driving mode, and it also shifts up. But now watch it. It's it's really, really strange. I mean, probably, you know, they want to do that intentionally because when you have the launch control activated then the shifting happens automatically again. So we just wanna, wanna be safe here. So guys, and here we go. shifting automatically although being in this sport mode and I mean I usually prefer that you have the sport mode where the, the dual clutch and vision is still working as we see for example like in also Porsche, uh, Audi and, and stuff. But here obviously they, they did the other way around then that you really stay in this manual control. Um, I mean, we can we can do one more test. Um, for example, if you say so, that um, it's maybe um, maybe it's about the uh, that you really have to go all the way to the to the RPM limiter. But that's that's obviously um, even not the case. So um, interesting that it still works in this launch control mode, and that's you know, that's working pretty fine for sure. So here, like, let's go one more time to the ref limiter, maybe. So, yeah, doesn't shift up. It's not happening. So that's really only happening in the launch control mode. Interesting finding. But that was pretty impressive, wasn't it, from the launch control? And good that we can also compare this result to the Nissan GTR we've um, ridden recently. And the thing is, this car feels so light and you also feel that in the acceleration, you feel that not so much masses have to be moved around. And to me, that's, that's a good feeling. If you're riding that hard with a heavier sports car, it stresses your body much more. Here, everything is like, you know, like a feather still. It's a, you know, it's a sp an aggressive sports feather, you can, um, you can maybe say so. <laughs> and of course, also nice sound, wasn't it? So, pretty good result here for sure. Great acceleration, and to me, such a light, agile sports car indeed makes also more sense um, than those huge, heavy ones. And now to our conclusion here, the BMW M2 Coupe. Yeah, we always have a lot of fun also when shooting, even if it's cause, you know, it's it's also serious business in the case that it's a really a lot of work always. And sometimes things, you know, also go wrong and you have to spend even more time. But, you know, 
that's not <laughs> your problem, it's ours. This one here is the one you are interested about and we have very dramatic exterior for sure, especially for a compact car. The interior, I mean, could use some updates. Um, you know, there are meanwhile interiors on the market which also have a better build quality and it looks a little bit old fashioned, but I mean, overall totally okay because this one here is focusing on the sporty riding and hardly any other car can really match that, this agile, riding feeling so it feels so light the car and so well to control truly a pure fun machine of course lacking some fabric all alcantara sports seats that's a crucial fact for sure hope you enjoyed our special riding part here with the m2 coupe that we delivered you this car after you asked us to and of course also in the future we try to fulfill as many wishes as possible so thank you very much for supporting Autogefuel. Keep supporting us. We can really use your support and also tune in for the next episode.